I created this 3D Gaussian splatting scene and rendered the video all in less than 60 seconds on my Windows PC. I'm Jonathan Stevens, and I'm gonna show you how to do exactly this using Instant Splat. That is a project that came out a couple months ago from NVIDIA Labs, and I think it's really cool, but really was built for Linux. So I'm gonna show you how to get it up and running on a Windows computer, and once you got it up, and then all you have to do is launch the Gradio interface, tell us where your data is, and hit run, and it'll do everything else for you. So let's jump into the code and start building this project. Okay, so I created a forked page from the original project on GitHub, and I'll include the link for you to go grab this. So basically, we're gonna be showing you how to build this. It's these 3D scenes. They have some assets that we're gonna download that you can actually run and look at these yourself. And it's pretty easy. I just basically had to mod a few things to work on a Windows PC as opposed to Linux. So first we're gonna just gonna follow these instructions. And I do notice that I didn't include this in the instructions below, but I will probably by the time you build this, but there is a couple dependencies. The first thing you're gonna need is to make sure you have CUDA Toolkit installed. And I'm guessing if you've other, done other 3DJS, you already have it. You're just gonna look for CUDA Toolkit and they're free. I suggest you use 11.8 because that is like the most compatible with most projects and that's what I'm gonna be running. So you're just gonna go to this, you're gonna pick Windows x86, um, Windows your version and local, download it, run the installer, it'll add it to your path, it should be easy. So make sure you, you do that and you should be on your way. That is the only prerequisite that I can think of at the moment. Everything else should be built based off dependencies, but if you run into a dependency issue, comment on this and I will add it to the instructions uh, in the video description. All right, so going back to my page here, I'm basically just gonna follow these directions kind of step by step, in which I need to launch my command prompt. You can just go hit start CMD. I'll make this nice and big for you guys. And we're just gonna clone the project like so. And this doesn't take very long. It's just gonna pull all the files from GitHub. Once it's done, should be all done. Then we're gonna change our directory into instant splat. So now we're no longer working in our user folder. We're working in the instant splat folder. And then it tells us to make this checkpoints folder if we don't already have it. So it's just an if it doesn't exist, that's it. So now if I go to my computer here and I go to my users, I should have an instant splat folder with all that stuff that's been pulled. And there should be this, uh, we told it to make a master checkpoint folder, which is right there. So we're good to go. And then the next thing we need to do is grab this whole, this, both these lines together and it's gonna download this checkpoint, which is a quite large folder or quite large file. So if I go here, and hit paste anyways, and it's gonna start downloading. This is gonna take a while, um, might take several minutes, but depending on how fast your internet is. I'm gonna skip it, because of course I already have this downloaded, so I'm just gonna kill this, but you will just let it run. So I already have it, so I'm just gonna make sure I drag that into the folder where I need it. So I'm gonna delete this guy. Okay, I have it pasted back into the folder, and as you can see, it's like 2.7 gigabytes. So it's a quite large file. And that's what you're gonna download. So just make sure it's in there. Uh, it, you'll see it successful in your command prompt. So going back to the instructions, in fact, I'm gonna make these bigger for everyone. It says create the, uh, create the environment. So now we need to make what's called a conda environment, which will contain like all the code and everything we need. So just gonna go put that in there. And again, this shouldn't take too long, but it's gonna basically install all the prerequisites, Python, CMake, things like that. See, it's done for me. It might take a little longer for you. And now I need to activate it, basically get into this environment. So I'm gonna put in that next line. As you can see, we're just going line by line. And then I need to install PyTorch. Um, this one says 12.1. So if you guys already have Kudu Toolkit 12.1, you can use that. Um, otherwise, you wanna change that. So like for me, I had 11.8. So I'm gonna do this 11, ah, 11 11.8, like so. And then I'm gonna run it. But before I run it, I actually want to show you, if you're unsure what you actually have, you can go to NVCC dash dash version, and it'll tell you the version you have. I actually have 12.6. Um, I told you to get 11.8. I 
I'm actually going to have to do something. So if you are on 12.6, I'm going to show you a quick trick. Otherwise, skip this part. Okay, so if you find that you are actually have like a newer 12.6, I notice that when I try to install this with 12.6, it says it no longer has PyTorch um, available. So I actually have 11.8 and 12.6 on my machine, and you can explicitly set uh, your path to be 11.8. So now um, I believe if I go to NVCC, uh, might not show it cor ah, correct. But now it shows 11.8. So if you are running 12.6 or something later and you're having problems getting um, this PyTorch install, go ahead and run 11.8. Uh, and then I can, I'll can i make sure I have this in the instructions as well. Otherwise, just skip over what I just showed you. So, um, so now I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to run this. Copy that with 11.8. Like so. And this part might take a few minutes. Hit yes. And so now it's going to extract all these packages, download it, install them. Um, it's getting your PyTorch, things like that. So I'm going to fast forward here because this will take at least a few minutes to run. All right, so it's done. Uh, so now I'm going to install the requirements tech. So this is like all the like sub packages, things like that. Simple pip install. I promise you guys getting this all up and running is going to be the hardest part of this whole project. Um, not nearly as hard once you have it all built. Okay, so it's done. If you have no red text, it means everything works. And now I'm going to install these sub modules one at a time. And this is typically where people run into issues. If you run into an issue, it also might you might also need um, Visual Studio. Uh, I, I didn't see that in the dependencies, but I'm guessing you will. If you run into those issues, again, comment, and I will update the instructions as people run into issues, and I can update the instructions for people that run into issues for troubleshooting. Okay, so that one's installed. And we're going to add the next submodule. Okay, that is successfully installed. Just got a few other things to install. Uh, these last ones will only take a few seconds. It's only these uh, big sub modules that take any amount of time to install. Okay, so that's installed. Now we just have these three last small pip installs that we need to do that uh, aren't part of the original instructions, but you'll need running on Windows. Uh, once open 3D, very useful for a lot of things. Okay, and then I'm gonna do this pip install last one for FFmpeg. That'll be very quick. And now there's this optional install. Um, I suggest it. So basically we're just gonna, you're gonna change the directory into this. You're gonna do this Python setup line. It's compiling. Okay, and that's done. That part I didn't really point out. That, that does take a little bit of time. And then the last thing, I'm gonna copy this last thing. It's just gonna put us back into our directory for instant splat, not one of these subdirectories. So now if we get down to the usage, you'll see that it is not very descriptive. Uh, I actually need to update this as I'm making this video. I realize, which I will add instructions on how to run what I have, but I'm just going to show you. So if I go after the top here, you will find a couple files that don't exist in the original um, GitHub repository for this project and the one i have linked is the one you're going to need there's a couple there's this uh run infer dot python if you just click on it and then you're going to download the raw file and then you're going to want to go back and you're going to want the instant black radio as well you're gonna click on that get the raw files and you're going to want to make sure that then you go to your instant splat folder and you're going to basically take those uh, two different files that you downloaded and put them in there. So um, for me, I'm going to do that really quickly. Okay, so there's one. And then the infer. There's two. So now I have this run, infer, and this gradio. So basically what I did is I created two Python scripts that will run this all for you. And you don't really have to get too into how to run it from scratch. Um, there's, yeah, two ways you can run it. So the one is this run infer, and that is kind of like your hard way of running it, which I will update instructions, but you're basically gonna type in 
Python, and then uh, run infer.py, and then you're going to have to put in the input and all that. You're probably not going to want to do that. But if you want to run this Python script in like a command line sequence, uh, I will have the instructions how to do this, but you're going to basically then type in all the parameters and it's going to run an output. But we really just want the Gradio interface. We want this to be uh, really easy. So you're basically going to type in Python. And then if you just type in instant and hit tab, it'll finish it instant splat gradio.py. Hit enter. It's going to run the Gradio interface. So give it a second and it should start it up. And it creates this, this link. So if I just hold control and click, it'll launch it in my browser. Okay, so midway through this video, I'm just gonna take a quick pause. If there is a project that you are trying to use, some sort of 3D Gaussian spotting project that's code-based and you don't know how to run it, please comment below, because I would love to make a video on how to run it, how to work it on Windows, because I know a lot of these just work on Linux out of the box, and I can work that through with you. Anyways, let's get back to the tutorial. And there's, again, not much to see here but we have an input directory, an output directory, the number of views, and then we have this kind of like training how many steps. And I always suggest leave it at a thousand steps and then play with it. And number of views, I'm gonna show you how this works in a second. So there is some assets that came in this. If you go to this assets folder, you'll see the Sora and then art and then images and three images. So how this works is it basically trains the scene off of either three, six, or 12 images. I can, you can actually mod, I can modify it to be 24, but it wants to use a few sparse images and it's gonna create the whole scene out of it. So if you go and take a few pictures, let's say, I don't know, something in your house, just three images, they don't have to be perfectly aligned, but just take three images and then you can put them in your own folder. So I'm actually gonna show you an example in a second, but I can call a folder called cabinet. Cause I have a cabinet right behind me that I made a model of like so, and then you're going to want to put your images in an images folder, like so. So then let me just grab those cabinet images. You can see here, I have three pictures of my cabinet. I'm gonna put them in there, paste it, and that's what it should look like. Uh, but I'm gonna use their test image first. I'm gonna do this art one. So I basically just need to put in this art folder. So I'm gonna copy and paste that and then an output directory. I actually just do art and then add output. So it'll be in like that same folder. Um, but you can put wherever you want. So wherever you want it out, put the video and all the splat files and things like that. And then match the number of views you've taken. So if you took six views, it should be six. If you took 12 views, it should be 12. So just think about that and hit processing and it will start for you. It says 20% done already. That's not quite true. If you actually load up this, it'll show you what's happening and um, give you an idea how long it takes. Look how fast this thing's going. All right, now it's training and it's gonna run really fast. So now it's training four, six. So you can see how we're getting, I think this actually might take a little bit more than a minute for this one example, but I'm also running this video thing in the background, record all this, and it does take a little longer. Um, however, I have trained some in this, uh, in like 57 seconds, even quicker. And because I'm running Gradio, it does add some overhead. So it will run faster if you run it just pure command line. So just want to keep that in mind. But this, like, again, we're talking about like, I'm going to add 30 seconds. So now it's done. It's going to create the video. So now I'll show you the rendering progress. So although it says 80% here. That's just, uh, I didn't have it do incremental updates, but you can watch it in the command line as it goes. Okay, it's just finishing now, and um, it should be done in just a second up on the screen, like so. And it's gonna tell you, like it output all these things to these different directories, and you can watch the video right here in your interface. You can also click this button up here, it'll download it to your downloads folder. Um, it doesn't control the output name. It's always kind of has the same name. But then if I go to my folders, you'll see it created an output folder. And that's where you're going to have um, your results. So it's actually this interp hours 1000. Um, ah, and you got your video right there. Uh, and it also rendered out the stills. So pretty cool. 
Doesn't do a super high resolution. I was going to play with some of these settings so you'll maybe have more options. I do know it does some downsampling. And then it also did out uh, output a point cloud. And then that, if I open up, let's say, Super Splat, like so, and I want to take a look at that, you can pull that in there. I think they have some work to do on what this looks like because uh, I notice everything looks all spiky, but your video output doesn't look anything like this. So um, I think it's a, an issue that they will be addressing. And so hopefully they fix that, but uh, the rendered videos are really cool. So super easy to use. Again, just match your number of images that you input to the number of uh, images in the Gradio interface. And it's that simple. And so, so now you know how to make these. It's kind of like, what, what is that good for? I made this video render uh, from three images. So let's take a quick look at those three images. All we had was this image, this image, and this image. And we made like this nice transition. So what's pretty crazy is that you're able to do some, some cool, like, I don't know, visualizations of a product. Maybe you don't have a lot of pictures to go off of, but you want to make like a smooth 3D look. So I actually ran one of a cabinet, which I showed. So let's just, let me just show you that here. So um, again, if this thing's still running, I can just change these and put in a new, a new, uh, new set of assets. So I had assets, Sorak, this cabinet, these images. And again, I wanna put in, not the images folder, but the folder one out, like so, and put an output, like so. Number of views is three, hit process scene. It's going to start running for you. You don't have to worry about, um, is this not moving? You can watch it right there. But again, let's jump into those those three. So I go to images and I just have, this is like right behind me. I have this, this, and this. They're not the best images. Took them on my iPhone really quick. I think I was moving. But like, let's say you have a sparse set of images that look like this. Um, the great thing is, is then I could make like an animation of it. Maybe it's a product. Maybe it's this like little cat figurine and you only have a few pictures of it from the past of a property showing. Maybe you got something like that and you want to make that cool kind of smooth movement view of it. And that's what I think it could be cool because now it's going to run this. I am probably already have it. Um, it's training. This would take a little longer because I did input a much higher resolution image. So it is going to take a little longer. Um, and I'm going to show you the results of this one too, because you can improve. I think those three images were great, but I think it would have done better with six or 12. Okay, it's done. And so I got this video again, three images. Notice how it falls apart a little bit between the images. That's where I'm saying it's like, maybe this would have been a lot better with six or 12, but play around with it. Increase the iterations, see what gets you better results. Do know as iterations go up, so will your GPU. Uh, usage. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, yeah, just three images to 12 images, and you got yourself this really crispy, smooth, animated fly through, and you have a 3D Gaussian splat in the background, which isn't the most useful at this point, but I think they're going to fix that according to the issues on the original GitHub repo. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. I'm going to be making a lot more of these. I also have some generative AI NVIDIA Cosmos videos coming out real soon. And I hope you guys are interested in that as well. And I will, of course, put a video out here for you guys to have fun with. And I hope to see you in the next video.